What's up, Interweb? Raikun here, and welcome to my match for PPL Division 2 Season 3, Week 7. We are facing Electristorm 252 Jack of the Melbourne Victory Star, and I am representing the Pittsburgh Pirate Stars in place of Old Man Tapu, where to step down. So, <coughs> if you haven't checked out my team builder video, Make sure to go down in the description and check that out so you can find out in more detail what team I've brought to this match and why I've brought the sets I have. Um, <coughs> apologies if I have to clear my throat and stuff during the video. I'm still a little bit ill. Getting over it, but still a little bit ill, so uh, hopefully I can still do half decent commentary for this game. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But um, yeah. Let's go over really quickly the team that I have brought to this game. Obviously, like I said, you can get more detail on the team builder. But real quick, I'm bringing an Assault Vest TD Lisk, a Black Sludge, a partially, specially offensive slash bulky Scun Tank, a physically defensive Calm Mind Mega Sableye, a Choice Banded Entei with HP Grass. Uh, then we have a mostly physically bulky uh, Cresselia, uh, and a Life Orb Keldeo. That is the team that I have brought. If you want to know why I've brought exactly those sets, then make sure to go down the description and check out the team builder, like I said. Uh, but we can see my opponent has elected to bring Greninja, Tauros, Gramble, Dalmanitan, Tornado Styrian, and Porygon 2, so I was quite surprised by a couple things. No Mega Alakazam, so I was strongly expecting that one, so okay, fair enough. Um, and there's a lot more offense than I was expecting, honestly, uh, because he didn't bring the likes of Skarmory, he didn't bring uh, Gastronon, which I was very sad at, and Tay's HP Cross is useless. Um, but he's got Porygon 2 and, like, maybe Gramble to be defensive, and that's about it. Everything else is just really scary offense with Greninja, Tauros, Dalmanitan, and Tornado Styrian. So, pretty spooked by a lot of stuff in this one. Um, but we'll have to see how it goes. But I notice he has no electric immunity whatsoever, so I decide to lead with my healer list. So, let's get right into the game. Uh, before I do, actually, before I forget, thank you very much to uh, the Juancito Marvel, the Juancito Marvel for joining my team for this game. You're an absolute legend, my friend, and thank you to Carson for recording the match for me. I don't have my capture card anymore because I lent it to my girlfriend. So, um, thank you, Carson, for recording the match for me. I do appreciate that, my friend. But without further ado, let's get into this game and let's see how things go. So, like I said, I'm going to lead with my Heliolisk as uh, Jack decides uh, he wants to lead with his Porygon 2. So I bring out my Sun Lizard, and he brings in the P2. Now, I'm going to decide to go for a Thunderbolt first turn, just to try and scout how much damage I can do to this P2, what kind of set we're dealing with, and what kind of investment he has. So I'm just going to fire off a T-Bolt, and we can see from the damage that it does right now, uh, I can tell that that is most likely a physically defensive Porygon 2. And that's okay, he's just going for a Toxic turn 1, that's okay with me, I do not mind in the slightest. Now, I'm going to go for a Volt Switch uh, on this turn, and I'm actually going to expect him to double Toxic here. Uh, because I'm going to expect him to predict the Volt Switch and go for a Toxic, expecting something else to switch in. Uh, so predicting that, I'm actually going to go into my Scun Tank, because obviously I can take the uh, the uh, Toxic, I'm immune to that, uh, and then I can just follow up with a Sludge Bomb, hoping for that 30% Poison chance. So I'm going to fire off a Sludge Bomb, hope hopefully I can get a Poison on this guy, I don't. Does a nice chunk though, he's going to go for a Recover. That's okay, no Sludge Bomb Poison. We can go for it again, he's recovering up. I'm going to go for another Sludge Bomb right now, um, and we can see this actually does quite a bit of damage because I do get a crit, uh, but no poison as he's going to come in with a try attack. I can take this pretty decently well. Uh, I've got a bit of, a little bit of uh, bulk investment in this one, but he does get a power. So I do two sludge bombs, no poison. He's going to go for one try attack, get a power on me, of course. Uh, so now I'm just going to continue to stay in and just spam sludge bomb until I get a poison, basically. He's going to go for a recover one more time. I don't really care what kind of HP he's at, as long as he's poisoned, I can wear him down pretty effectively, because I have things to do a lot of damage to him, so as long as I get the poison, I'm okay. Third Sludge Bomb, still no poison. Okay, fine. I'm at a good, pretty good amount of HP there, so I know I can take, like, two tri attacks from this point. He's gonna go for one now. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, I'm gonna go for another Sludge Bomb. Uh, and full Sludge Bomb comes in, still no poison. Um, and I know I can take one more try attack so that's what I'm gonna go for right now. He's gonna go for it. So, uh, Santank's job, honestly, is ju just poison the P2, it, it doesn't do anything else in this match, so uh, gonna come in, I get another crit, but still no poison after 5 sludge bombs, so now I'm expecting him to recover, so I'm gonna stay in and go for one more sludge bomb here, as he does go for the recover, gonna go for the uh, for the sludge bomb right now, um, 6 sludge bomb, please give me a poison, give me a poison, that's all I want here, just a poison, no nothing, no poison whatsoever. A little bit unfortunate, I get two crits in it. Meaningless crits, really, because he can just recover off the damage. And and no poison, which is what I wanted. But hey-ho, now I'm going to save my Skuntank. Go on out into my Mega Sableye, because I know he's going for a try attack right now. 
Um, and I can save his content for Death Follow. Now, this was a pretty bad play on my part. It was fairly obvious he was going to go into his Gramble, because that's his way to deal with Mega Sableye. Uh, he's going to get a Meanless Intimidate off on me. Uh, I just went for a Calm Mind here. It wasn't my best play. I probably should have just gone for a Shadow Ball and just scouted what kind of set this Gramble is. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I do, I do just go for a Calm Mind right now. Um, and it's probably a bad play, because I'm obviously just going to be forced out, because I can't stay in against this Gramble. Um, so now I'm going to switch on out, and I'm going to go uh, back out into my Skun Tank, uh, so I can uh, save it, or I can sack it off, get some Aftermath uh, recoil on this Gramble, because I'm expecting a player rough right now. And he does do just that, just goes for the player rough, as uh, I sack on my Skun Tank, get some Aftermath recoil on the Gramble, let's chip damage on him, and uh, my Skun Tank's going to go down. So Skun Tank, unfortunately, not doing what I wanted him to, which was poison the P2. And we can see the leftovers on Gramble, so that's good to know, not like Bandit or anything like that. So potentially a bulky one. And I could have gone into my Keldeo here and gone for a Hydro Pump, but if it was specially defensive, then it wouldn't have taken him out. I didn't really want to risk it. A player would have taken me out. So I'm going to go into my Cresselia, and I'm going to fire off a Thunder Wave, because nothing on his team wants to take a T-Wave, and I didn't expect him to stay in. And he does go out into Darmanitan, and I'm going to get a T-Wave off on him, which is great. Now I'm going to stay in, and I'm going to click Hidden Power Rock on my Cresselia, uh, to scout how much damage I can do to this Darm, and to see what kind of set he is. So I'm expecting him to just go for Flare Blitz right now. Get some nice damage off on the Darm because he's probably max HP, as he's going to go for a Flare Blitz right now, and this does a lot of damage. This is Sheer Force, Life Orb, Domanitan, Adamant, Life Orb, Domanitan, um, and that's a lot of damage. Now I go for an HP Rock again, trying to knock out the Darm, which is probably a bad play on my part, because it didn't look like I was going to knock him out anyway. I should have probably just gone for a Moonlight, and racked up more Flare Blitz recoil on himself. I know, obviously, I was going to be risking a crit or something like that, but I think it was probably worth the risk to try and save my Cresselia, because uh, I could have come out with my Cresselia out of that. If I'd have gone for a Moonlight there, as he'd have gone for a Flare Blitz, I could have taken one more, and then I could have knocked him out with an HP Rock, and then potentially Moonlighted on something like the, uh, the, um, Gramble. So, that probably wasn't my best play, but it was something. Now I'm going to bring in, on the double down, I'm going to bring in my Helios, because he bring in Tornado's T, which is fantastic. He's going to go for a Heat Wave right now. Even with uh, dry skin, I'm still going to take that pretty well, and I'm going to go for a T-Bot, see how much damage I can do. He is, in fact, Assault Vest as well, so uh, I still do a really nice chunk to him, but he is also Assault Vest. Now, I'm very happy to just stay in continually clicking Thunderbolt, because, like I said, he has no electric resistance on his team, so why the hell not, right? He's going to switch in his P2. As I said, I'm going to go for another uh, Thunderbolt on the switch here. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh... I actually score a massive crit here, and that matters a lot because now it leaves him in range from another Thunderbolt. Without the crit, he would not have been in range from another T-Bolt right there, but I'm able to actually knock out his Porygon 2 right now, which is fantastic. That's like the only bulky thing on his team, aside from maybe the Gramble that, uh, that he's got left. It's the only thing with a reliable recovery anyway, so I can sell wearing everything else down, which is awesome. Now he's going to bring back in his Tornado Theory, and he's able to knock me out with a Heat Wave here, and there's nothing I can really do about it. I don't have a safe switch in. I could have, like, switched out into Keldeo, but I didn't really want to risk a Hurricane, because I was thinking a Hurricane probably would have killed me at this point anyway, so... Didn't want to risk going out into my Keldeo or anything like that, plus he can outspeed my Keldeo anyway. Wasn't much point. Now I'm going to go out into my Entei, and, uh, I'm going to click uh, Sacred Fire here, because he doesn't really have a very good switch into it. I can get a burn on basically anything. He's going to switch on out and he's going to go into his only thing that can really take it pretty well, and that's his, his Greninja. This still is going to do a huge amount of damage, though. This Bandit Sacrifier comes in. Max Attack, Adam, and Bandit Sacrifier doing a huge amount of damage to this Greninja. No burn, though, is what it is. Uh, I'm going to switch on out into my Kelio now, knowing I can take the Water Wind that's potentially incoming, or if he wants to switch up to his Dark Stab, I can take that too. And he does go for the Dark Pulse right now. Like I said, that's fine. I can take that, no problem. And um, I'm going to get a Justify Boost here. Meaningless, but a Justify Boost nonetheless. He's going to go for another Dark Pulse, sacking off his Greninja here, as I am just going to go for the Calm Mind. Uh, Calm Mind? I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump here, um, because um, if he wanted to switch out, it was the best thing I had to hit his whole team. I knock out the Greninja from this range, so I think that was my best play overall, and I'm going to knock out the Greninja here. Uh, I didn't feel like there was a point in trying to set up on this thing, because... It just wasn't worth it. I didn't have reliable recovery. I was going to get worn down and still die to a hurricane anyway. Now, in comes the Tornado Ethereum. And he is going to go for the hurricane. He's going to connect, and he's going to knock out my Keldeo. I didn't have a safe switch into him, so I couldn't switch out here. I was kind of just hoping he missed the hurricane, and I could get off a big old Hydro Pump against him, but alas, I could not. Now, I'm going to bring back in my Entei. Now, at this point, I've just got Entei, and I've got uh, my Mega Sable. I'm going to go for the Sacred Fire here, because he doesn't have a very good switch in. I know I can take a hurricane. And I can knock out the Tornado Stereo from this range with a Bandit Sacred Fire. So he's going to go for the Hurricane. He does connect once again. He's going to get a big amount of damage off. And he's going to get Fusion. And I got very sad. And then I'm going to hurt myself with Fusion. And then I just lose. I just lose because of that. Uh, because now I, I have to switch out. Because he's going to be able to knock me out with another Hurricane. 
I want to come back in and I have to extreme speed him, but uh, from the range he's at, I'll not be able to knock him out at all. Uh, so it's just not looking very good at this point. There's not much I can do, honestly. He's going to go for the Dark Pulse on my Mega Sable. I'm not going to do much. He's going to go for a Hurricane, get a huge amount of damage off. Could have gone for like a Recover. There was not much point, really. Could have gone for Recovers, hoping he'd missed one. But then what would I do in that sense? Nothing at all. I'd just go for another Shadow Ball. So, <coughs> Shadow Ball doing nothing. And I get a meaningless Spideff drop. Uh, because I'm not going to hit him with any other special attacks. Mega Sableye goes down, all I've got left is Entei. I can still win if I crit him three times in a row with extreme speed. If I crit him three times in a row with extreme speed, I win. Uh, but it's unlikely, honestly, so... I'm gonna come in with one extreme speed here, and uh, you can see we, 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 we don't get a crit, and, and we just die to another Dark Pulse, and that is gonna be the game, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me one second. Man, I hate being ill, but that is the game uh, between uh, me and Electrostorm 2.2. We take a 3-0 loss there. Oh, that Hurricane Confusion was pretty unfortunate. Um, the Sacred Fire I was going for against that Tornado Therian, um, it, I believe it had something like a 68.8% chance to knock him out from that range, but then if I didn't knock him out with the Sacred Fire, I also had a 50% chance to burn, and if I'd have burned him, then it, the burn would have knocked him out subsequently, so the odds were in my favour, to really in my favour, to knock out that Tornado Therian there, but um, <coughs> he got a Hurricane Confusion, so, you know, is what it is. Um, if he hadn't have got the confusion on me there, it would have been a really, really close game. I'm not saying I would have won it, but it would have been a really, really close game because I would have had my Entei and my Mega Sableye left, and he would have had his uh, Tauros and his um, Gramble left. Now, Tauros outsped my Entei and could knock it out. Gramble did not outspeed Entei. Uh, a minus one Sacred Fire would do over half to him, even if he's physically defensive. Um, and could have potentially burned him. Um, and my uh, the Tauros could not have touched the uh, the Mega Sableye. Um, so Mega Sableye shut down the Tauros. Gramble killed the Mega Sableye though, but Tauros outsped the Entei and could knock it out. But Gramble didn't kill the Entei. So it's just one on one, like one mon beat one, but didn't beat the other. And it would have just been a massive 50 50 at that point. Because if I'd have stayed in, taken the Hurricane, knocked out the Tornado Steering with Sacred Fire, it would have been down to. He would have had to bring in Tauros, I think, uh, to scare out my. Um, my. Thingy Bob with the stuff, my Entei. Um, but then if I'd have pulled the switch into Mega Sableye as he pulled the switch into Gramble, that probably would have been the game right there. Um, but if I just stayed in expecting him to go into Gramble and click Sacred Fire, then that would have been the game for me. But then if he'd have uh, if he'd have stayed in and knocked out my uh, my Entei, that would have been the game. So it was just it would have been a massive 50-50. It would have been a really, really close game if he hadn't got the Hurricane Confusion. But alas, he did, and we took a 3-0 loss this week against Jack and the Melbourne Victory Stars. Alas. We go on 2-5 and five on to next week. Week 8, we are playing Ellie of the Accrington Startler. And I'm looking to get my revenge. I played it twice in the PPL so far and lost both times. The first time I played it, it was just Salamence Sweep. Uh, second time I played it, I felt like it was a really close game. I could have potentially won it if I didn't miss a Fire Blast. It would have been very close uh, if I hit, had hit that one. So we'll have to see how this next week goes. But thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure to go down in the description, check out links to the team builder and to my opponent and to Juan and to Carson. Make sure to go check them all out. They're all fantastic people. So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure to leave a like on the video. And hopefully, I'll see you guys sometime soon. Toodaloo.